Okay, um, first of all, thank you for inviting me here to, uh, to present the Nordic uh, um, report, Competition in the Waste Management Sector, uh, with the subtitle Preparing for a Circular Economy. Um, my name is Johan Adamson, and uh, as mentioned, I, I coordinated and project managed the, uh, the, uh, the Nordic project which led to the which resulted in the report. Um, and the report, uh, well, it is a result of a very close and comprehensive uh, cooperation between the Nordic uh, competition authorities. And I have to say that I have rarely enjoyed myself as much as I did at work uh, during this um, project. Um, and even though we were probably much far too ambitious in the beginning of this uh, project, we soon found solutions and common grounds to, to make it work. So it was decided that the report should focus on possible public restraints on competition that may arise from regulations and the different ways in which waste management is organized in, in the Nordic countries. Uh, in addition to that, it, it was decided that it should explore similarities and differences regarding competition in waste management and it was also decided that the report should explore the different uh, systems for ex extended produce responsibility, EPRs, in, in the Nordic countries <coughs> and the way in which they affect uh, competition. Well, as I uh, mentioned, uh, it really was an ambitious project. Uh, so as soon as the project group was full, we quickly set up a rough contents draft of the report, including an intended table of contents. Um, most of that table of contents has, of course, changed during the process of conducting market studies and writing the report, but, uh, but the impression that the waste management sector is undergoing an, an evolution um, and that the understanding of the very complex nature of market structures um, was key to the report has remained throughout the project. Uh, therefore, the report opens with an introduction contextualizing uh, the evolution of waste management, followed by a description of the legal frameworks and the structural waste management sector. Um, well, Changes in the behavior of societies tend to shift focuses and uh, create a need for adjustments in order to avoid what is sometimes called negative externalities. Uh, when, for example, the consumer consumption skyrocketed during the 50s and 60s, uh, municipalities started to introduce mandatory um, waste collection in order to avoid inappropriate uh, waste disposals. The environmental issues and concerns of today pose a monumental challenge and calls for big and fast changes in short, uh, short term. So the next phase uh, of the evolution of um, um, waste management lies probably in the circular economy representing a move from the linear industrial economy of taking, making, consuming and disposing to, a, to an economy of uh, reusing, repairing, refurbishing and recycling resources. And there is a great potential in allowing creation of new markets and to further develop and renew old and present markets to accommodate uh, the needs of today and tomorrow. So utilizing market solutions is generally thought of as the best way to ensure correct valuation uh, of a service or a specific goods uh, and also of uh, ensuring the most efficient utilization of society's resources. Uh, but of course with markets follows also concerns of competition issues, rising not only from regulatory issues, but also from the behavior of market participants.
as I mentioned, uh, a big portion of the project was uh, conducting market studies um, to uh, fact-finding emissions. Um, and um, collecting information, we collected information about legal frameworks uh, and the organizational setups and structures of the national waste management sectors. So, and the, the legal um, framework for waste management in the Nordic countries is heavily influenced by uh, the poli policies and legal framework of waste in, uh, in the EU. Even though Greenland, Faroe Islands, uh, Norway, Iceland are not even members of the EU, though uh, Norway and Iceland are part of the internal market uh, through the EEA agreement. And uh, most of the applicable EU laws or legislation, pieces of legislation, legis legislative uh, acts. Uh, are directives rather than regulations, which means there is a vari varying degree of leeway uh, in implementation, which results in somewhat different implementations in different countries. Um, one example of that is that waste is not defined in the same way everywhere. Um, <coughs> some countries define waste um, by source rather than form, and vice versa, meaning that commercial waste, wa waste generated by businesses and rest such as restaurants, and, for example, uh, to some degree can be defined as municipal waste in, for example, Sweden and Finland. Um, Waste management has historically been a matter for the municipalities, which explain why they still have a very, or in many cases, have a very dominating position today. Um, municipalities have a great variety of tasks to perform in relation to waste management, but uh, uh, after the introduction of the notion of extended producer responsibility, the importance of the role producers play has also been increased. <coughs> Municipalities often both administrate and participate in markets for waste management. Municipalities have both the right and the obligation to collect and treat household waste. Uh, and the municipalities are of course free to decide how to organize these act activities. And there is, of course, a great variety of choices ranging from, as mentioned by previous speakers, uh, in-house solutions, uh, public procurement of services, and there also side-by-side -side competition. And uh, the municipality's exclusive rights to household waste and the pinnacle position in regards of all waste management activities is a distinct feature of the structures of waste management sectors in the Nordic countries. The waste market can be described as a chain where each link is of importance for the functioning of the whole system. And the three main stages uh, of the waste, what we call value chain, are collection of waste, sorting waste, and treatment. The market conditions for each respective stage vary greatly, not only from country to country, but also on the municip on a municipal level. The efficiency of collection, treatment, and disposal of waste is conditioned also by a number of factors such as the uh, population density, income levels, geographical properties, etc., etc., which emphasize that there is probably no optimal one-size-fits-all solution that can be applied in every situation 
whether it concerns collection, treatment or disposal. The, the importance to make a full system assessment is um, when creating and evaluating waste management services has been emphasized in literature. Um, the risk is otherwise to create inefficiencies and decrease the collective welfare through uh, what could be labeled bad decisions. <laughs> so um, the choices uh, a municipality make can cause competition problems and or distortions um, rising from both organizational or as well as uh, executive decisions. An organizational decision can, for example, be to organize its activities in full virtual integration. It means that the municipality has chosen basically an in-house solution creating relatively high barriers to entry, not only on the specific market, but probably also on adjacent markets. But in some cases, full vertical integration is the most efficient choice. The important bit is that the municipality should conduct a proper evaluation assessment before making such a decision. In Sweden, roughly 25% of all municipalities have chosen an in-house solution for collection and 71% uh, have chosen to procure the collection. The remainder rely on a combination of those uh, in-house and procurement. Whilst in Finland, approximately half of the municipalities have chosen to retain their exclusive rights for the collection of household waste. The other half, which covers about 40% of the population, has chosen to decentralize the organization. Uh, which means that it, it is the property holders, so the, the households, um, responsibility to organize uh, collection of waste and in those uh, municipalities the collection of household waste is uh, performed by private waste collection firms under individual contracts with uh, property holders and house owners. The report um, also outlines a few problems arising from executive issues uh, differing from organizational. For example, relating to the definition of household waste, which is a problem in Sweden and Finland, for example. Since uh, household waste is not defined by source, rather than rather by form uh, and properties of the waste. It raises barriers for, for example, producers that take or wish to take individual responsibility since any investments in building a unique recycling system is in major risk since municipalities can suddenly uh, change their minds and uh, their interpretation of the definition and decide to um, start, for example, an in-house solution. But there are also examples of municipalities trying to take advantage of unclear definitions. Um, for example, the Swedish municipality tried to make a case before the courts that the municipality should in fact be regarded as a producer in, in terms of the law, um, since it produced in, in terms of EPR, an, e, an, an EPR scheme, um, since it produced a lot of printed materials, for example. Um, of course, there's, uh, or perhaps there is sometimes uh, political decisions uh, behind. Perhaps a municipality has decided to invest in a big uh, biogas treatment facility and need that influx of uh, materials for the production of biogas. Those decisions probably influence other decisions the municipality make. Well, 
Another issue is cross-border trade and um, well, the EU advocates cross-border cooperation and trade where it's found necessary and advisable, as it is said. Uh, however, in some cases, the rules on, for example, pre-notification of re pre-notification requirements of any cross-border movement of waste uh, creates an indirect <coughs> barrier to trade because of administrative costs. Uh, was one of the findings uh, in the report. And there are also other problems and distortions described in, in, in our report. Well, uh, competitive neutrality enhances allocated <coughs> efficiencies. When an economic agent suffers from unfair disadvantages, it is not able to compete in the market on equal terms. For lack of neutrality will also inhibit entry of new firms. As a result, goods and services are not necessarily produced and offered by those who can do it most efficiently. The lack of competitive neutrality may also limit the willingness to invest in research and development and thus hamper the gains from innovations. In waste management markets, competitive neutrality problems seem to originate from three different sources. Firstly, municipalities have several and sometimes conflicting roles in, in waste management. Secondly, uh, municipalities have exclusive rights to municipal solid waste. And thirdly, in some cases, municipal undertakings have undue advantages compared to private undertakings. There are different tools available in different Nordic countries to tackle problems of competitive neutrality. Some countries have uh, spe specific uh, leg legislative tools that allows competition authorities to intervene when problems uh, regarding competitive neutrality are observed. Others manage the problems with more general competition law tools, such as applying abuse of dominance provisions. Irrespective of the legislative tools available, it is important that municipalities uh, themselves recognize the positive effects that a level play with playing field brings uh, in waste management markets. The extended producer responsibility schemes, uh, they extend the re responsibility of producers and importers to the post-consumer stage of, pro of a product's life. Um, the main objectives of the EPR schemes are to increase the collection and the recycling rates of products and materials targeted and to shift the financial responsibility from municipalities to producers in order to incentivize producers to take environmental considerations in account when designing their products and thus create products and packaging that are easier or less cost-intensive to, to reuse or re recycle. EPRs is an individual obligation, um, but uh, in a great number of cases, producers create uh, joint structures, uh, so-called producer responsibility <coughs> organizations, PROs, to execute their legal obligations. The report uh, presents the EPR schemes in respect respective Nordic country uh, and uh, highlights competition issues and challenges. Regarding the <coughs> packaging EPR, for, for example, one problem is that there is sometimes very little competition regarding the collection points. As in Sweden, for example, uh, where um, the, the 
there are two PROs competing, but the one of the, the PROs are the incumbents present throughout the country with collection the sites uh, evenly distributed in all municipalities. Um, there's a requirement in the legislation that any new PRO or collection system, as it's called in, in, in the law, um, a, a, a requirement to be uh, to function uh, is that you have a nationwide uh, presence, uh, which of course is a great barrier to entry for new uh, uh, competitors. Um, Well, um, based on all the findings of the report, the project group formulated a number of conclusions and recommendations uh, that we grouped into separate, six separate but closely related categories of recommendations. And they were the following. Um, we recommended, or we recommend increased use of market solutions recommend the clarifying public roles and goals and increasing dialogue, sufficient tools to tackle uh, competition neutrality issues is very important, um, and um, we also recommend a better use of municipal procurement procedures in waste management sectors. We also recommend improving statistics, the collection of statistics and common definitions. Um, and also um, recommend ensuring the efficiency of existing EPR schemes. If we look more closely on those recommendations, the, the first one, in, increased use of market solutions. Well, the report is not intended to argue that the entire current system of waste management ought to be dismantled or, or that every household should uh, have to buy its own waste management services. Nor is it a wholesale priva privatization of municipal waste management undertakings called for. And, um, Um, for example, if there is uh, no or only very limited access to capacity for private operators in the waste management market, um, a fully vertically integrated system, uh, an in-house solution, is probably uh, quite an efficient solution. There, there we, we, we saw some examples of those. However, offering municipalities a wide-ranging exclusive position may create a too comfortable ex existence and maybe a little, uh, too little incentive uh, for efficiency or innovation. There is um, potentially a risk for municipalities, um, th th there's potentially a risk that municipalities and ultimately their residents will get less value for money than they would if there was no exclusive rights to household waste. At the same time, other benefits of competition, such as increased incentives to innovate, are lost to society overall. We therefore suggest that uh, an obligation for municipalities to continuously evaluate their operations and to consider market solutions ought to be introduced. Exploring market solutions would allow municipalities the opportunity to compare the status quo with uh, the pot potential benefits of market solutions. In order to accurately evaluate current practices and assess the potential benefits, municipalities must keep separate accounts for waste management acti activities, which is also important. 
Um, by having regulatory monitoring and market design tasks, as well as performing one or several services themselves, problems with lack of clearly defined and divided roles appear. A necessary step in the direction of clarifying its roles and goals is to describe it in a, in a transparent manner. Moreover, in order to find the most efficient means to achieve the goals whilst creating stable waste markets, municipalities would benefit from having regular meetings with other stakeholders. Stakeholders, including private waste management undertakings, should be consulted at an early stage when, for example, waste management plans are being designed. Local and regional waste council, consisting of both private and public stakeholders, may prove beneficial for the strategic development of waste markets, and waste management plans should be required to contain organizational aspects, including a description of the allocation of responsibilities between the various public and private operators carrying out the waste management. It is currently optional for member states to make such requirements according to the Waste Framework Directive, but none of the Nordic countries <coughs> have chosen to do so. All Nordic, all Nordic competition authorities have one way or another to tackle competition neutrality issues. Some have special designated provisions that forbid, for example, anti-competitive sales activities. Others use the abuse of dominance provisions when applicable. Um, in a general sense, the, the authorities should always have tools to address uh, any harmful lack of competitive neutrality. But which tool that is, uh, and uh, which is most effective, needs to be closely evaluated and may be very country specific. On the other hand, all regulations and policies regarding municipalities' participation in markets should, as far as possible, seek to ensure competitive neutrality, when it entails an, uh, whether it entails an obligation for municipalities to have, have uh, transparent and detailed accounts or rules on organizational separations of roles. I don't think that, uh, don't think that matter. The uh, importance is that they're put in place. Um, Procurement procedures is one way of creating competition for the, for the markets, but it can sometimes create problems if the procurement procedures are unclear or not carefully adhered to. Relevant bodies in the Nordic area are recommended, therefore, to evaluate whether their procurement regulations could be revised in order to ensure that there is sufficient scope and incentives for municipalities to create innovation, uh, to create innovation-friendly and cost-efficient tenders. And relevant national bodies should offer increased support and tools to improve the municipalities' procurement procedures. An absolute necessity for evaluations and comparisons of a specific market uh, and the efficiency of, uh, on such markets depends heavily on the availability and, and of the <laughs> it depends heavily on the availability of reliable data. Uh, any lack of data or questionable reliability is compounded compounded by the variation of applicable definitions or unprecise nature of definitions. Uh, when we conducted our market studies, we found that some of the data we were looking for were not to be found. For example, statistics on costs, um, trade um, and procurements. And if they were available, they were dif difficult to, to analyze. Or not complete. 
Uh, and since a uh, few definitions are applied differently in different countries, uh, we found most of the data we actually were able to collect were useless for us in the perspective of conducting a market study. Which is why we, uh, uh, one of our recommendations is to uh, uh, improving statistics and common definitions. And with improved statistics, decision makers would be better equipped also to make the right decisions in order to make the best possible deals for themselves. Uh, last but not least, um, we recommend ensuring the efficiency of EPR schemes. Uh, the F the objectives and efficiencies of the EPR schemes are risked uh, if decision makers do not consider if there are potential efficiency benefits to be gained by increasing competition in the relevant EPR markets. And uh, we concluded our report with uh, a few remarks regarding the these, these, the recommendations we do put forward is of a short-term uh, nature, but there is also a long-term um, need to, to probably uh, make even bigger changes to the system in order to adapt completely to a circular economy. But what those changes or steps are uh, is difficult to to even uh, discuss at the present. But we um, um, are sure that we need to be moving from waste management in municipalities to, to waste market management uh, in order to, to adapt to the circular economy. And uh, I think that's that for me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jan Adamson. And now I guess it's time for questions from the audience. Um, Vai ir kādi jautājumi no auditorijas lūdzu? Jūs drīkstat uzdot, viņus arī Latviešu valdā. Un uh, mikrofonu mums ir pieejami tos, tad attiecīgi mums iedos. Uh, hello. Uh, first of all, thank you for interesting presentation. And uh, I would like to know, uh, did you notice some changes uh, since you have launched this report in Nordic countries? Um, exactly about the recommendations, I mean, uh, did you make made some uh, steps uh, towards your recommendation to some other institutions or, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, it's, I think, uh, in in uh, in all the Nordic countries, uh, steps will be taken, but I think uh, in most cases it's down to choosing the right moment to present uh, any uh, practical or or um, um, practical steps or suggestions to 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 be implemented in, for example, Sweden. But we do have had a lot of presentations of the report and a big, big interest uh, um, from decision makers. And um, I, th I think uh, there will be changes, um, not perhaps necessarily down to our report, uh, but uh, but the, I think uh, all countries have identified specific topics they, they want to pursue and uh, I think Norway is probably the one the, the, the country that has moved uh, furthest of us all. For this welcome your time. Hello, my name is Jana, I'm from Latvian Erde. I would like to know if you uh, see or you've seen um, 
very good examples of how to collect uh, waste and how to deal with it after some just best uh, examples. Best examples? Yes, just from real life. Um, I think there's a lot, lot of good, good examples out there. Um, it's difficult. The idea with our report from the first day was to make a, a very um, ambitious uh, description of, of the market, who the players were, what they did, uh, was it cost effective, uh, and and uh, do all of those. Uh, Economical analysis that we usually do, uh, but since we did haven't had the data to to actually compare uh, one practice from another, it's difficult to say. What we can say is that uh, there are probably systems that do need a big change, <laughs> uh, but what. The alternative, but the best alternative for respective municipality, for example, is it's impossible to say with a rather big, uh, big uh, studies. Well, this by the welcome time. Yeah, good job. Yeah, yeah. Es gribētu latviski uzdot jautājumu, lai viņš būtu precīzāks. Vai Skandināvijā jūs esat pamanījuši atpakaļ virzību no komersantu līdzdalības atkritumu apsaimniekošanā vairāk uz pašvaldību kompetences palielināšanu? Tā tad pretējā virzienā nekā šodien mums virsrakstis skan. Un ja jūs esat pamanījuši tādas notikumas, tad kāpēc tie notiek? Um, well, there, in the complexity of all the markets, there are examples when municipalities have chosen to uh, go for, go for a uh, an in-house solution, for example, uh, but I, uh, we, we don't, we have not noticed uh, a trend in that direction. Instead, if you look at, for example, Sweden, the the, the percentage of municipalities using in-house uh, solutions is on a decrease. So with these, we see rather the opposite trend in in, in certain countries, in a way. Uh, and I would also say, probably, we haven't looked at, at it that way, but uh, I would probably say that's the same for Finland, at least. Yeah. Well,